peace, joy, contentment, fulfillment. These are all things that people associate with spirituality, spiritual practice, and the development of the spiritual dimension of life. And, and they're really important attributes to consider around that development and growth that we can experience. Many people experience that growth and development, that peace and joy, as a result of moving through difficult times in life, through difficult circumstances. Sometimes it's because things fall apart that we, when we experience great difficulties, that we look in different ways to find a sense of fulfillment, that we engage further in spiritual practice, we explore ourselves in a deeper way. Today, I want to talk about a person who exemplifies that process of finding peace and joy in sorting out life's difficulties, and who was able to hold on to them even in the midst of tragic circumstances, circumstances that most of us can never imagine experiencing. And while I talk about that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell. Many of us know of the life of Anne Frank. Her journal, The Diary of a Young Girl, captures her experience in Amsterdam. Her family was Jewish, the Nazis took over the Netherlands, and her family hid away in sort of a makeshift apartment in the rear of a factory her father owned. Eventually they were arrested and Anne Frank died in a prison camp. Anne Frank wasn't the only person, the only young woman who kept a diary in Amsterdam during the Nazi occupation. Today, I want to talk about another person who kept a diary, Eddie Hillesum. Eddie's diary, her journal, is captured in the book, An Interrupted Life. She wrote this in her 20s and 30s. She was a bit older than Anne Frank. And she was also Jewish. She was raised in a family that wasn't practicing, but they were ethnically Jewish. And her family, you know, really valued education. So her family really sought to make sure that she and her brothers all received higher education. Eddie didn't really feel that she was particularly loved as a child. And, and that was part of her struggle. It, when she became an adult, she, she moved quickly to Amsterdam to be on her own and began looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, many people do that. And as that became more dissipating for her, she sought out the assistance of a Jungian psychoanalyst. This Jungian psychoanalyst did what many Jungian therapists do and encouraged her to read and reflect on life through, through novels and through other kinds of bibliotherapy. He recommended that she read novels by Russian uh, writers, as well as by the, uh, Christian mystics, books by some Christian mystics. And in this process, Eddie developed a sense of God in her life. Now, this wasn't a Christian God or a Jewish God or, or a God from a religion. It wasn't a God who saved anybody from anything. Instead, it was an imminent sense of God, an awareness of a divine source within her, a divine presence that she found radiating in her life, giving her peace, filling her with joy, and not just within herself, she saw it in the world around her and other people and in nature. It was that imminent sense of a deity, that divine presence that she carried with her. In this development, she came to realize something and wrote about it in these terms. She said that, you know, as I take a half hour each morning to cleanse my body, you know, to wash up, to do her hair, to do the things that she did in the morning, so I also need to take a half hour to prepare myself for the day, innerly, interiorly. This was her time of what we would call meditation. She would sit and be quiet and be present to God who was within her. And it was that which became her source, her strength, 
the way in which she found to build the spiritual dimension of her life. And of course, writing was part of her spiritual practice. And she kept that journal to, to help explore herself. As her life began to transform and she began to grow and experience greater peace and fulfillment in life, she was also aware of the Nazi takeover of the Netherlands. And she knew that as a Jew that her life was in danger. But she made the very clear decision to not go into hiding. She had that opportunity but wouldn't do it. And her reason was this she was not going to allow anyone else to limit her freedom, her peace, and her joy in life. She wanted to embrace life as fully as she could. And so she wasn't going to allow the evil being perpetrated by the Nazis to limit that. And so she continued to lead her life in a full and, and energetic way. As she looked at the Nazis, she understood that they, as well as many people in the world, didn't have that awareness of the divine in her life that she found. She talked about it as God having come home in her and made a home in her. And she lamented that other people didn't welcome God into their home in the way that she had. Again, this isn't about having a personal savior or something, but this is about having that awareness of an interior divinity being within her and sustaining her. Initially, her parents were taken up by the Nazis first. Eddie did something remarkable. She went and said that she wanted to be housed with her family. So she went in with her family and use that as an opportunity to reconcile the differences she had with her family. And she even records in her journal, while she's in captivity, walking with her father and talking about deep issues in life and being able to talk with him openly about their impending death, realizing what was going to happen with them, and in parts even joke and laugh about it, about the irony of it all. But in that process, she reconciles with her family and finds a great deal of closeness with her, them, as well as with other friends. She continues to lead that full life. I think there's one quote that for me captures Eddie's outlook on spirituality and on life and spiritual practice in a very clear way. And I want to read that to you to make sure that I convey that properly. She writes in her journal, ultimately, we have just one moral duty, to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, more and more peace, and to reflect it toward others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will also be in our troubled world. You know, oftentimes people think that spirituality is just about feeling good for myself. Eddie Hillisum is very clear that her experience of peace is about healing the world. It's about being, bringing peace into the troubled world. That the way to bring peace in the world is to experience peace in ourselves and to radiate it out. Most frequently when people read her journal, while her story is tragic, they don't have a sense of the tragedy, but are overwhelmed with the joy she conveys in writing about her life and about her experiences. So that peace and joy become really critical in her and in her writing. In the comments, I want to invite you to share how going through trouble in life has brought you to a sense of peace or joy or the ways peace or joy have helped you get through troubled times. Share that in the comments, and I'm sure that that will be helpful for other people as well, as a way for you to bring some peace into the world. Thanks for your time. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it with others. I really appreciate your being here.